How are we doing, everyone? Welcome back to the very first golf video of the year. We are kicking off our season here at FSI. I'm joined with John Cool19 as always. John, welcome back to the year 2023 for PGA Picks. Sweet. I'm I'm excited, ready to hit the ground running. Swing season was fun, but it's certainly not uh, uh, spring golf, if you will. Although uh, it's not spring here in Minnesota, we got uh, a blizzard come through today. But you know what? It's probably spring year round in uh, in Maui, all over Hawaii. It doesn't ever leave springtime over there. So yeah, excited, super excited to get into the new season. Uh, how about you? How was your a uh, little bit of an off season? Yeah, a little yeah. off season. Got married uh Congrats. went back to, yeah thank you i uh, went back to school and got a couple of classes done at the local community college to get my degree and um yeah so little, off season kind of a little busy <laughs> over here in ohio also busy with sports betting legalized in ohio so shout out to all my ohio viewers uh we are running live i know it's been a lot of fun gonna be able to place a lot more golf bets not sure how i feel about that yet uh <laughs> we'll see how the bankroll goes how many how, how i do but i know one thing when we get into the one and done i'm probably gonna bet the one and done every year i hit a couple winners last year so hey if i hit a couple winners again this year i might be plus money on the year i think it's gonna be a good strategy but we'll get into one and done stuff next week because there is no one and done this week as you can see, we are, have our little FNGC symbol down here um, at the bottom of the screen. Big shout out to Fantasy National Golf Club. Um, they are going to, they are running the same one and done contest. I, I advise everyone to get into it. It is, I think, over half full. You got into it, right, John? Yeah, it, it's getting close to three quarters full when I saw it today. Uh, it will fill, no doubt about it. So uh, $125 entry. Uh, top prize, I believe, is it tw is it twenty five k, fifty k? Somewhere, it's it's pretty crazy. It's, I think it's fifty k. Yeah, so it's a huge prize pool, biggest prize pool I think out there as far as one and dones go. Uh, so certainly get in that this week. If you wait till uh, Tuesday or Wednesday next week, it's going to be full. You'll be uh, you'll be playing in a smaller contest. Although you could right. probably still get in one. They'll run some smaller ones. Uh, but yeah, we will be in the largest of the large ones with all of the other touts out there, Pat Mayo included. Uh, so yeah, definitely get your entries in now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, so we're talking Century Tournament of Champions. We're in the beach. As you can see, John has the beach going for us in the background. Talk to us about what we can expect with the course and some of the history involved with Kapalua. Sure. So uh, the tour has been playing here for quite a while. This is the plantation course at Kapalua. We are in Maui, Hawaii, the island of Maui, town of Kapalua. Um, so this is a little bit different course. It's a par 73. We don't see very many of those on tour. Uh, the change versus par 72 is there are only three par threes out there. Uh, so certainly not including any par three scoring in my modeling this week. Bermuda grass greens all over this course. Um, the big key to kind of watch out for between now and tee off is the wind. This course uh, is obviously coastal. It has the trade winds that blow really just one consistent direction nonstop just about year round. If the winds are up, then this course becomes a bit more difficult. If it is like we saw last year, this course is crazy easy. I think uh, Cam Smith shot like 32 under par last year. It is yeah. as easy as they get. Really, even if the wind starts to blow, it's probably top 10 easy courses uh, on tour. If the wind isn't blowing, it's top two or three easiest courses on tour for the season. Uh, so pay attention to that. Um, based on that, we're certainly including birdie or better in our modeling. Um, ball striking really being the key stat here. This course has no rough at all. It's like two inches max, non-penal, and the wide, the fairways are wide open. So we're going to see drivers just absolutely smashing it. Um, you want guys who can get it out there long. Accuracy, not important this week. Just throw that stout, that stat out. Don't care at all about it. The greens are very, very large. So I'm not really including greens in regulation because everyone's going to be hitting most of these greens in regulation anyways. Yep. Uh, but kind of the way that the course works, 
is it 7,600 yards seems very, very long. What they did though in the design is the longest holes are downhill holes. So they really don't play that long. Also the longer, longer holes are uh, playing downwind. So again, they're just not that long. And then the shorter holes are into the wind. Those are a little bit more difficult. And that's where we're gonna see some, uh, some proximity from like 200 plus. So quite a few shots coming in at the long range. And then the par fours that are downwind that are easier downhill, it's pretty much just a drive it as far as you can and a chip 75 yards, 100 yards in, something like that. Uh, so we're really not going to see versus like two or average. Very many shots come in from like 100 yards uh, to 200 yards. That range is just much lower than average. So very, very short approach shots and very, very long approach shots is what we're going to see this week. So consider that in your modeling. Um, the course history here uh, is pretty relevant. Uh, so I am absolutely including it in my modeling this week. And then the last thing to think about here, that Bermuda grass putting, these div these greens can be difficult, they can be tricky. And especially with how big they are, we're gonna see some really, really long attempted putts. I'm putting, pardon me, I'm putting three putt avoidance into my modeling. I just need guys, even if they are chipping, um, really you're gonna be chipping for a lot of eagles this week. And uh, so I'm gonna be looking for guys just to make sure they can get uh, in for par or in that case in for some birdies here in uh, one putt as well. Uh, so that's kind of where my modeling is. I'm going to include some around the greens here just because, again, a lot of those shots, the guys like Cam Young, Tony Finau, they're going to be chipping on some of these par fours. So we absolutely need that around the green game, not because they're going to miss greens, but because their tee shots are going to roll right up right. to the edge. Um, so that's kind of a different look at this course when it comes to around the green play. Um, but certainly if I had to had to pick it, approach a little more important than off the tee, but I'm just going ball striking. Uh, I think that a combined stat is is uh, super critical this week. Make sure to include that drive distance as well. Any other thoughts on the course or key stats that you're including in your modeling? No, I think you nailed it, especially when you mentioned the short par fours. That was going to be the only thing that I was going to add. Uh, proximity, if you wanted to go from 100 to 125, some of the par, par fives have that as like a, a close proximity. Um, maybe opportunities gained, uh, sure. that's greens and the fringe, but honestly, I think you hit it pretty spot on, uh, with this, uh, I didn't mention a lot of drive five scoring the, the par fives are very, very scorable. Although the oh, 18th yeah. is like, like 650 yards or something crazy. It's a true three shot par five. The other yeah. three or they're going to be gettable. These are downhill par fives. Um, a lot of guys are going to score a lot. And they're going to have eagle opportunities. We need golfers who are going to score well on the par fives this week. So uh, definitely that is in my top five stats. Didn't really yeah, mention yeah. it. But uh, again, this is a birdie, birdie, birdie course. Absolutely yeah. fun to watch um, as far as uh, uh, fans go. Yeah, specifically remember that Dustin Johnson drive where he drove it literally inches from a hole and one on the par four downhill. It was really fun but we won't be ever i don't think we'll be seeing him uh for a very long time anyway the masters. he'll be at the masters yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, what form he'll be in we don't know um true so let's get into it let's get to the picks uh we're only going to roll out one pick each here with the no cut event short field uh you know if you john if you have any honorable mentions throw them out there. Uh, but really, I was looking over some of the ownership projections that they had on Fantasy National. Everyone at the top is going to be super high owned, which reasonably so. They're the best golfers in the world up there. Uh, but I did notice here at 8,800, Cam Young didn't have as much ownership. He was in that weird range between where you can fit two or three studs with the with like, you know, your punt plays, uh, your popular punt plays. So I thought he was in a weird zone. I don't, I don't mind Cam Young as a guy that you stretch to get as like golfer three in your lineup. Like it, he's like, he's out of that low 8K range and he's into this weird tier. And at uh, 20 to one, a guy that plays short par fours really well. Um, he is fifth in 350 to 400 yard par fours. Um, you know, he has a 10th in that proximity range that I mentioned second off the tee, really far, really good driver of the golf ball. Uh, he finished third at the hero. Um, so it says he's in some decent form, very serious guy. I think he's a guy that he's going to be working off of that really elite rookie of the year. Um, he did win rookie of the year, correct? Yep. Yeah. So I think he's going to be coming off of that and, um, 
All the attention seems to be on Tom Kim, and I think Cam Young is going overlooked as that rookie to look out for that could really make another jump, maybe win a major this year. We'll see. How will the putting do? Um, that is the only question mark I have is will he be able to make enough putts? But, you know, a lot of guys, like you mentioned, are going to be making a lot of birdies. Cam Young, really good at those. Really good at making eagles on par fives as well. So uh, I had him circled heading into the pricing. And then when I saw he was only 8,800, I thought that's perfect. Right in the no man's land. What's your thoughts? Uh, I love Cam Young. He ended up number uh, three overall in my model. Uh, so I absolutely love the play. Uh, everything you said about him, true. I love the comparison with Tom Kim. Very, very different golfers, those two. Um, but I think this course fits Cam Young better than Tom Kim. We are not going to be able to say that week in and week out. If we're talking yeah, yeah. just accuracy and short game, I think I'm going to give the nod to Tom Kim quite a bit. But if we're talking distance, off the tee, ball striking, Cam Young should be able to win that matchup more often than not. Uh, so yeah. I am absolutely hanging with you here on Cam Young this week. Uh, for me, as far as a favorite, this golfer came in number one in my model, uh, Xander Schauffele. So I love everything about him this week. The price is very fair at 9500 He could be your first guy in, or if you want to really play a, if you have a good punt play you love, then you can certainly have him as your second option. Uh, Xander is tied for third best odds to win this event, yet he is priced sixth on DraftKings. So I think you get a little bit of value right off the top there. He's 10 to 1 odds to win. Uh, his last four events, he's finished top 10 in all of those. That's the Hero, the Zozo Tour Championship, and the BMW. He was the winner at the Travelers and the Genesis Scottish Open in order to get into this week's event. He also had two runner-ups last year, so a great season for Xander. Uh, again, he was number one in my modeling. A lot of that has to do with his excellent iron play. I have him uh, listed as number one on approach the last 36 rounds. He's also a very, very good Bermuda grass putter. We're talking course history. He, he's played here ever since 2018. He, he finished 22nd, 1st, 2nd, 5th, and then 12th last year. So great course history. Um, and then uh, just a, a couple more stats on him. He's 6th birdie or better in this field, 20th in distance, and 14th on par 5 scoring, uh, top 15 on uh, off the tee play also. So everything is uh, checking boxes there. Uh, that short approach, 75 to 100 yards to uh, he finishes uh, third in my proximity modeling. So I like just about everything about Xander this week. He's going to be popular. That is the one question mark as far as that goes. But you know what? If you play Xander and then you kind of get a little different elsewhere, I have won uh, a four-figure win at this event. And I absolutely had Chalk at the top of my lineup. And that is okay. You got to get different elsewhere. I had Harris English. He won it all. That was the difference maker there. He was not priced at 9500 So certainly getting different elsewhere is okay. This event, you're going to play some chalk. If you avoid all of it, you're not going to win. I think that's just a fair way to look at it. Uh, you can't play the five chalkiest guys and then fit one extra guy in. Probably going to need to get different in two spots. Um, but again, you don't have to play two guys in the uh, 6,200 range in order to do that. Uh, but I think Xander is absolutely playable in just about any combination of lineups. I would have to agree. I also think players like JT, Rom, some of those elite studs at the top, also guys that you can continue to play as well. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, this is an elevated event. So um not sure why Rory's not here. Now he's going to have to play every elevated event with that new rule change uh, going forward. But Rory uh, coming off of some elite, elite form from last year i wish he was in this event i think it would have set up perfectly for him but um you know guys like rom i think rom hasn't finished outside the top 10 in this event um only another guy in this field that's done that we'll talk about him next that is jordan spieth 8200 love where he's pointing right there to the sign uh to his name perfectly done there john elite course history four for four with four top tens and a win in 2016, the magic man. Um, I love him on the West coast. I like him on POA. I don't mind him here. Bermuda greens. I know, but um, I think Jordan Spieth has that putter magic that you're kind of looking for uh, a guy that can do it in various ways. I think he's 19th on the approach, which isn't spectacular, but I think it's going to be enough to get the job done. Third on the par fives, ninth on the par fours, fifth in that proximity from 100 to 125. 
Uh, I think Jordan Spieth, 8,200. He's probably going to be around the 18 to 22% ownership. It is going to be a little elevated, but I think, um, you know, he would be good for a cash play at 8,200. And then if you wanted to go a different route at that same price point for a GPP, I think you could do so. Maybe hope to hope to find the winner in that 8K range like you did with Harris English. So what are your thoughts on Spieth and who is your favorite value play? Yeah, I think Spieth's a, a great, great option. I really like him. The modeling for me it loves him as well. Um, if you go back to that win I had, I also had two 8K guys. Uh, Joaquin Neiman fit right in kind of in that low 8K range. Not a guy that many people were playing headed into this event. And it worked out really well for me to be unique and get a guy who finished right at the top of the leaderboard. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Speed. Very, very good option this week. That course history is tough to ignore. Uh, right. For me, I just went a bit cheaper on the value option. I, If one of these guys is going to beat the other, it's going to be Speed beaten wise. I'm okay with that. But you know what? For the pricing and on DraftKings, I like Aaron Wise quite a bit. Um, the value here, he comes in at 7400 That's the 18th. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the 25th priced golfer but he's 18th in the odds books right now so i do think again you're getting a little bit of value on the pricing he probably could be at least three four hundred dollars more expensive and i would be still interested but not as much as i am right now with the 7400 um his last missed cut on tour i know this is a no cut event but his last missed cut was in june he's playing really good golf over the last six months or so he was top 25 in three out of four swing season events uh, he's only played here once. He finished 27th back in 2019. But I think if you look back, not very many first-time golfers have great success here. There's a couple who've played well. I think Cam Young might fit into that category this year. Uh, but not many have been able to excel. It's usually second, third year that golfers are able to move into that top 10 and win this event. So I like the um, experience that Aaron Wise has down at this price at 7400 He qualified actually via FedEx points. I don't see any wins on his tour card for last year, um, but I'm okay with him squeaking in based on uh, that criteria. Instead, he was runner-up at the Memorial, and he had four top tens on the season, um, but really he's kind of an overall great golfer in the modeling. He's 26th on approach, 16th off the tee, 17th birdie or better, top 20 distance, and top 10 par 5 scoring. Uh, those long proximity shots, 200 plus, he's second in this field in that stat. Also, the main reason, though, why I love Aaron Wise this week, he is an excellent Bermuda grass putter. His yeah, putter yeah. is so hot lately. His last five events, he's gaining almost four strokes per event putting. If he can carry that this week, he's going to be a top 15 guy. If you're gaining four strokes on the field putting at this event, you're going to be able to finish top 10 in this field. Um, so I like how hot the putter is. I know it can go cold at any time, but you know what? I'm going to ride it as long as it lasts here for Aaron Wise. Uh, so give me him, even in, in some cash lineups, I think he is an excellent fifth or sixth option for cash on, on a balanced build. Um, love me some Aaron Wise this week. Yeah, absolutely. I think he um fits the mold for what you kind of want here especially at that 7k range you know he does pretty well on coastal courses that does seem to be his mo rsm kind of sticks out in my mind sea island things like that um yeah i think uh there's a constant theme with some of the picks here and the bermuda putting happens to be one of them um i don't know if we did that on purpose or not but i i noticed a lot of guys going through this some of our best uh some of our better bermuda putters all right quick note on value plays before we move on to our punts hideki matsuyama is coming off of a neck injury he burned a ton of people last year with withdrawals even you know, slightly after a lock, there's a lot of bad taste in everyone's mouth on Hideki. Now, I don't know how much everyone will remember those uh, moments from last year, but I think this is a great spot. You're going to have a lot of people looking at game logs. They're going to see pretty poor form uh, from the end of last year. They're going to see injury from last year, but I think he is going to be the left out guy that has the ability to win events he's won in hawaii before he's won the sony open i believe twice now uh so look out for hideki in in this spot at maybe potential lower ownership i just wanted to make that mention uh it's maybe a bet i'm gonna place um or maybe get him some gpp action but i like hideki at low ownership now if he's chalk you know 
do your best to get away from it because he's just got some volatility with him. But I think that's a good price on him in the books and on DraftKings. All right, now let's get to punts. Yeah, I don't see him, I, just real quick, I don't see him gaining much ownership this week. I think he's an excellent GPP option. I would probably, based on just those injury concerns and stuff, maybe steer clear in cash. But an outright bet or a GPP play, I love it a lot. I think if you're looking more cashy options that are lower, Aaron Wise, uh, Spieth, like you mentioned, Corey Connors, uh, and yeah, then maybe yeah. even like M or Burns kind of guys in that range, I think are some uh, other yeah. like cashy value type plays there. Uh, once you get side, outside of that, I think you're looking at ownership and GPP quite a bit. Awesome. Yep, I absolutely agree, especially the M call. All right, punts. Let's get to it. Sleepers going JT Poston, 6,990 to one. I don't think it's crazy. The guy was in a little bit of good form. He played a lot of events in the swing season. He had a 20th at the Shriners. He also finished 21st at the RSM. Uh, he's really, really good on Bermuda. One of the best Bermuda putters in the field. Really good on his par fives as well. Eighth uh, in that category. 26th from 350 to 400 on par fours. 24th on the approach. So the guy can ball strike and putt. I mean, that's exactly what you want to do here. Uh, I think JT Poston is an elite play. I don't see him garnering the ownership um, like some of the others in the 6K range, but I certainly think he's going to have some. So he's going to be in that 10 to 15% uh, ownership, maybe higher. I'm not sure. We still have a full day of everyone getting their picks out. So it could creep up, but I think he is a very good, uh, very good sleeper. Um, potentially ownership uh, on him, but I think he makes he fits the bill here for this kind of uh, golf course. What are your thoughts on JT? Yeah, he popped for me as well in the modeling. I definitely like him. I think there's uh, concerns with pretty much all of the guys really in the, oh, in sure. the 6K range, uh, and you can pick out the reason why you're concerned of, of him or uh, the next guy. Um, so, but, but I really do like it. For Trey Mullinax, the concern is injury. He did withdraw from uh, the RSM with an ankle injury. I'm going to be paying close attention to some of the uh, pressers this week. I want to know how Will Zalatoris is doing. I want to know who, how Trey Molinax is doing. I fully expect the media to completely ignore those injuries and talk about things like weddings and uh, <laughs> other information that we don't need to know. <laughs> But you know what? I'm going to be paying attention anyways, hoping somebody will slip in a question like, how are you feeling after your latest injury withdrawal? But we'll see if that question gets asked. Trey Mullinax for me, Perfect. stats alone, he absolutely pops in the modeling. Yeah. 6,200. He is 110 to 1 on DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're looking at guys around him, he has better odds to win than Sepp Straka. He's 7,100. Better odds to win than J.J. Spawn, Chez Reeve, and Svensson. All of those golfers are higher on DraftKings pricing, but they have worse odds to win this event. I don't think Trey Molinax is going to win. I think he gives you some value here as a sleeper, though, assuming he's healthy enough to play. He did finish fourth at the Houston Open and then withdrew the following week at the RSM. Uh, no course history for Molinax. Uh, he did get his win at the Barbasol this year to qualify. He's, pardon me, he is top 20 in approach, top 20 off the tee, top 15 birdie or better. And the main reason I like Trey Molinax, he is number three in this field for drive distance. He can absolutely crush the ball off the tee. He's also eighth when it comes to proximity from that 200 plus yards. Uh, so anything distance wise, Trey Molinax is absolutely your guy when it comes to a 6K golfer in this field. I think all the other golfers that are top 10 on drive distance are all like 8,800 and above. And so uh, wow. Trey Mullinax is the only guy that's really going to pop for you in that stat at the bottom. Uh, you know, your Tony Finau's, your um, your John Roms are all going to fit the bill there, but they're uh, $4,000 more expensive on DraftKings. So sure. he is my uh, punt sleeper this week. I would not, I'm not in Ohio, so I can't make this sports bet, but I would not be picking him <laughs> to win outright. I think he is an excellent sleeper filler option for your DraftKings lineups, though. He allows you to start with something like John Rom plus Shafley plus um, your Cam Young. And then your lineup works with Trey Mullinax. If you mm -hmm. want to start off with those three guys, you have to play somebody near the bottom. JT Poston works. Trey Mullinax works better based on the $700 discount. Not because he's better, but because of the discount on pricing. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, Trey... Uh, hopefully he's health healthy. Uh, you yeah. know, once, if he's healthy, he like I said, amazing play. 
Uh, so definitely worth following that. And <laughs> yeah, going to get a lot of scenery and wedding talk and what have you been up in the off season and all that stuff. So um, hopefully we get some golf content <laughs> this week from the, the hard hitting questions of how was your honeymoon? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tony, we'll is there another child, right? <laughs> <laughs> probably He's probably something. always got one on the way, but 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 Tony had a great great finish to his season. I I will absolutely be playing some Tony Finau this yes, week. Uh, he's finishing very high in my modeling. Also, kids or no kids, they, <laughs> he, it doesn't matter for Tony. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tony uh, in Hawaii just makes a lot of sense. All right, so that will wrap things up, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the very first edition of the 2023 season, P FSI PGA uh, Golf Pick Show. All right. Uh, you can join us in our Discord on uh, off our website, fsidfs.com, or off the Twitter handle, FSI underscore DFS, or you can follow me on Twitter, and I can help you get to more bonus content through us in our subscription package so that you can find on the website. Uh, I am at TK nation 47. That is at John cool 19. Thank you for tuning in. Come back for the Sony open. Please like the video comment below with any questions you may have. We are also available for any comments, John, any final thoughts? Nope. Looking forward to the season. Uh, definitely join us next week. We'll add in the one and done content yeah. and then uh, anything like the ownership projections and last minute weather advice will all be in the discord. That is where you're going to get the latest and greatest information come Wednesday night. I think we're going to get an opportunity for some Thursday morning content potentially in the chat. Also seeing yeah. as how this is a morning, a late morning start in Hawaii, that's probably mid-afternoon here in minnesota yeah. <laughs> so i'm um, yep. looking forward to be able to kind of extend that uh tinkering time absolutely yeah too much tinkering time though <laughs> all right guys thank you for, thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see you next week good luck <laughs>